Greetings and salutations. I'm Jerome Fisher. That's what my mother named me. My friends call me Fish, and you can do so as well. Welcome back to the island. I know what you're thinking. Wow, this dude is buff. Yep, because I have survival skills, unlike Tom Hanks in Castaway. Oh, I guess I need to get the call to action out of the way. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Slap the like and comment. You know, there's starving children to feed. So yes, I'm not going to be deceptive. Let's get that monetization rolling. Plus, I need to get to a thousand subscribers. Makes it easier to find the channel. All right, even though I look pretty buff on here, I still want to relax and don't want to keep swinging that axe to get some stone all day. So, we're off to find a Dodicarus on my trusty Argentavis. I don't know if you know this or not, but they're from the late Miocene area, approximately six million years ago. Also, to put things in perspective, one of the largest flying birds alive today is the Andean condor, which has a wingspan of nine feet, weighs about 25 pounds. By comparison, the wingspan of an Argentavis was comparable to that of a small plane, and close to 25 feet from tip to tip, and it weighed anywhere between uh, 175, 250 pounds. All right, let's cruise down this inland waterway and see what we can find. Look at this place. It's quite beautiful, isn't it? Ah, look to the right, a parasaur. Ooh. A dilo. Looking down there at the circle of life. A terror bird trying to eat a pheomia. Pheomias are great for numerous bowel movements, which in turn can be made into fertilizer. Hey, what do we have here? A little rumble in the jungle? Where's my bookie? I'll take a G on the Calicotherium. <clears throat> Die, Dilo. Yikes, Terror Bird fancies my back door. Bye bye Terror Birds were also in South America in the Miocene period, the same as the Argentavis. Bam! Knowledge drop. And the search continues. It always goes if you're looking for it, you can't find it. Well, we've reached that point in the video where we just gaze around and think about things that could have been, that might be. What is it that Willy Wonka said? Pure imagination? Some junk like that, I don't know. I could go for a chocolate bar, though. <laughs> All right, let's head to the left, fly towards the green obelisk. Hello, Dodicarus. Where are you? Hey, look down there to the right, a spike barricade. That's when Six and I tamed a baryonyx. If you don't have the spikes, all that work only to have your tame be eaten by some metasaurus. One of the most annoying things ever on Ark. Hey, here we go. That's what we're looking for, you little doty. At this point, really don't care what level it is. But it sure is pretty, that blue and red. Hey there, little Dodicker is going to shoot you in the head. Ten. Since you got them armor plates, going to get real small damage. Ten. Ten. What the? I believe they've nerfed the guns so they load slower. So let's speed it up a little bit to get this over with. Uh, yeah. By the way, Six has to have a copy of every animal on the Ark. So, coming soon in the next couple episodes, the Island Visitor Center and the Prehistoric Museum, as well as a tour of Ark Island Dream Homes. Those would be inspired by Ark aficionado and building expert Aaron Longstaff. Dude is awesome. If you haven't checked out his channel and you like building on Ark, he's the man to go to. And also on the way, we're working on CC Ark run through the jungle. Here's a little verbal foreshadow. There's a lot of death in that one. Mainly me. All right, let's get some berries in this biscuit eater and get its tame on. I wonder if the Dodicarus, like the modern day armadillo, is a carrier of leprosy. Just a thought. It's a pretty little Dodicarus. I think I'll name it Dottie. Yep, Pee Wee Herman gives two thumbs up to that name. If you don't know who that is, doesn't matter. Okay, let's get a saddle on it. Throw it in a pod. 
We need to get back to base. We don't want to be caught out here with our <clears throat> pants down, so to speak. Plus, the sun's going down. Which reminds me, as the sun turned from salmon color to flint, I thought of the salmon I had caught earlier and how I named him Flint. Thank you, Jack Andy. Ah, see, I knew it was gonna get dark soon. At least we don't have Ark Zombie Apocalypse or something. The shadowing and the terrain in this game are just amazing. Visually, I really like this one. Also a big fan of how awesome Red Dead Online is, visually speaking. I know there's a lot of other visually stimulating games. Those just happen to be the ones I've been playing lately. Love me some GTA, gonna get back on that one soon, and also Warzone. Although I suck at that. I just don't have a whole lot of time into it. Always get killed, but who cares? I don't really care, I just have a good time. And isn't that what gameplay is all about? You don't need to be an a-hole to anybody else. Just enjoy doing what you're doing. Just be you. Do you. Well, you know what I mean. I don't mean, I don't mean, do, you, you know, you know what I'm saying. Oh uh, yeah, real quick. What are your thoughts on Ark the Animated Series? You know, with Vin Diesel, Elliot Page, and the buff dude from 300, Gerard Butler. Speaking of buff, let's get back to important things. Did you see how buff I look, huh, earlier in this video? Qu quite impressive. Also, I don't mean to brag, but I also have an impressively impeccable sense of direction. Even in the dark, I'm like a human compass. <laughs> and with that said, I think I've taken a wrong turn somewhere. <laughs> okay, we do a 180, and we look for the light in the distance. Oh, I know we'll eventually get back home. Hark, look ahead. Is that a light in the distance? Could that be where I originally meant to go? <laughs> now you do know I did that overfly thing on purpose, just to make you feel better in case you have a really poor sense of direction. That's right, I'm always thinking about your feelings. Mine just don't matter. Ah, there it is, the glow of the flame through the darkness. There is safety ahead. Look at that, in the nighttime, doesn't that look like the perfect place? Like a tavern? There better be bar wenches. No offense, ladies, that's how it was in that time. And I hope there's a big horn of grog. As always on Ark, there's a few chores to take care of. Isn't that always the problem? You look at the clock at like 11 and say, I just got one more thing to do. And then you finish it and then, oh, I just got one more thing to do. And then, oh, I want to take care of this. And you look at the clock and it's 2.30 in the morning. Or is that just me? All right, knock out this and that, some of this, a little of that. Can't end the day without trying to catch a bird on fire. Let's see, get a Rex egg. So I don't know if you know this or not, but the name for the shape of a Pringle is called a hyperbolic paraboloid, but I digress. Just a quick look around at the Viking house I know, I know, I haven't called the interior decorator yet. My bad. But you'll see the rest of this one and the other homes here on island, as I mentioned earlier, in the island home of dreams. That's in an episode coming up. Oh, and again, don't forget to slap the like, give us a follow, subscribe, comment. It would be much appreciated. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. As always, a pleasure. I hope you had a wonderful day. And no matter what you're getting into with friends and family, make sure they know that you care. And as always, be excellent to one another.